Surveys are a great way to get feedback from your users. In this guide, we show you how to add a survey to your AngularJS app. We'll create a basic Angular app, add post hog, create a survey, then show you how to display the survey in the app and get responses. All right, now before we can start this tutorial, there are two prerequisites. One, you need to have Node.js version 14 or higher already installed on your machine. And two, you need to create a free post hog account, which will allow you to be able to do all of this awesome stuff that we're about to go over in this tutorial. Now, once you have those two prerequisites complete, let's hop into your terminal and let's go ahead and do an npm install dash g angular CLI. After you do that, let's go ahead and create a new Angular project by saying ng new Angular surveys. And Angular surveys is going to be the name of our Angular project. And here it's going to ask us what type of style sheet we want to use. We are going to press enter for CSS. And then it's going to ask us if we want to do server side rendering and we do not want to do that. So let's go ahead and type in no there. All right, next we want to jump into our Angular surveys. Let's go into our source, let's go into our app, and then our app.html. This is a lot of default code that comes automatically with Angular, and we're just gonna override this just to have a div ID of app that says Angular Surveys. Now let's jump into our terminal and say CD into our Angular Surveys. And now let's just do an ng serve to start up our project. All right, it looks like it was complete. We can now go back and do our application and we can see that we have Angular surveys right here inside our web page. Perfect. Now let's go back and do our IDE. And right now, let's go ahead and just stop our project. And now let's go ahead and do an npm i post hog js. This will download all the dependencies that we need for post hog. All right, next we need to go into our main.ts file. Let's override this to just use some of the post hog dependencies that we just installed. And right here, we can see that we need to instantiate or initialize our post hog with an API key and an instance address. If we go back into our browser, and we jump over into our post hog account. So this is your free account that you've already created. We can come down into our settings and right here under web snippet, we can see post hog initialization with an API key and host. Go ahead and just grab that entire string right here. Let's go back into our IDE and let's override all of this to now show our post hog init with our API key and our API host. Let's now go ahead and restart our Angular project. And now that we have it running, let's go into our browser. And if we refresh the page, and then we go back to post hog and we click activity, we can see that we've got three activities, a page leave, a page view, and a page leave, all from our Angular surveys web project. Now there are two options for us to now implement surveys into our Angular project. One, we can use post hogs pre-built UIs for surveys, or we can implement our own survey UI. In this tutorial, we're gonna go over both solutions. So let's start by going to surveys, create survey, and here's how we get to our post hog pre-built surveys. Now, this is by far the simplest option. Post hog has a variety of survey templates to choose from, which handles all of the display logic and captures responses for you. So for example, we can come over here and click open feedback. We need to ensure that the presentation is on popover. Our targeting is selected for all users. And we just wanna leave everything else default for right now. Now let's go ahead and say save as draft and then launch. And literally just like that, our survey is live. So if we come back to our Angular surveys and we refresh the page, we can see right here in the bottom of our screen, it says, what can we do to improve our product? And I'm gonna say nothing, it's awesome. I'm going to submit, it's gonna say thank you for your feedback and now we can close the survey. If we go back into our survey and we refresh, we can see we now have one unique user that has submitted a survey. After scrolling down, we can see what can we do to improve and we just see our message of nothing, it's awesome. All right, and that's how quickly you can build surveys using PostHog's pre-built UI. Now let's go ahead and say stop 
and let's delete this survey so we can create our own survey. So after I delete that, we can go back into create survey. And now we're gonna have complete control over the surveys at UI and logic. So this time, let's go ahead and say net promoter score. Let's click it. But inside presentation, instead of saying popover, which automatically appears when Posthog's JS is installed, we wanna use the Posthog API to show and hide surveys programmatically. So we're really gonna be doing four things. We're gonna create the survey UI. We're gonna then fetch the survey from Posthog. We need to add the logic to display and hide it and then capture the interactions from it. So let's make sure the presentation is API, the steps are gonna be default, and the targeting is gonna be all user still. All right, let's save as draft, and now let's launch this survey. All right, now let's go back into our code. Let's stop our application, and we need to first CD into our Angular surveys, which I already am, and now let's go ahead and say ng generate component components slash custom survey. Now, if we go back into our app, we can see inside our components, we have a custom survey component. When you run this command, we're gonna create four different things. We have the CSS, the HTML, spec, and our TypeScript. So let's go into our HTML and let's override this with new logic. Let's then jump into our custom survey component.ts and override that with some JavaScript logic as well. And inside here, we're gonna have our select value and our numbers because we are in fact using that numbers survey. Where we handle our select, we emit the dismiss, and then we emit the submit. Because we have to create this from scratch, let's go into our CSS and add in the CSS that is needed. And now we need to integrate our custom survey into our app component. So let's go over into our app component.html and let's override this to now be able to show our app custom survey component. Now let's go over into our app component.ts and let's override that now to use our custom survey component. So we're importing our custom survey component and then we're handling some of the functionality inside this TypeScript file. All right, so now if we come back in here and we say ng-serve to start up our application and we go back into our web app and we say Angular and we refresh the page, we can see in the bottom our survey title with all of the digits and dismiss and submit. Let's go back into our application and I'm going to close it out. And now we need to implement a way to fetch the survey from Posthog. So Posthog keeps track of all active surveys for a user. And this is especially helpful if you set up custom targeting options. Now to fetch the active surveys, we can use the posthog.getActiveMatchingSurveys, which returns a JSON array. Now to fetch this array, we can integrate it with our survey UI and update our code in our app component.ts. So now let's go back into our app component.ts and let's override this now with our ability to be able to fetch the survey. Now if we look up our posthog, we can see that we are getting the active matching surveys and our fetch active surveys, which gets ran when we initialize this component. Now we want to add the logic for displaying and hiding it. And the very first thing we did was change our show survey to false. And now if we scroll down, we have this check survey interaction. And we can see that inside here, we have our has interacted with survey, where we check the local storage of our browser to see if they have interacted with the survey in some way. Well, if they haven't, what well, we're gonna show the survey. If they have, we're not gonna show the survey. And then if we scroll down, we can see that we have our handle dismiss and our handle submit, which both deal with setting our local storage based on if the user has interacted with the survey. And if they did, we need to capture the survey dismissed or the survey sent to post talk. And to go with this, if we scroll up, we can see that we are also capturing if the survey was shown when we're checking to see if the survey has been interacted with. So not only are we changing the logic and changing the UI of the survey, we're saving in the local storage saying if the user has interacted with the survey or not, and all of that information we are capturing and sending to Posthog. Now, again, Posthog allows us to be able to capture so many different types of events for a application, which will really be able to propel your business based on the data that is getting captured. All right, so one last time, let's do an ng serve. Let's build our project. Let's go into our Angular survey. 
Let's refresh and now let's go ahead and say, what can we do to improve our product? We're just gonna click 10 and then submit. And now we can see that when we refresh the page, we are not gonna get that survey anymore and that's because we have interacted with it. If we right click and we inspect and we go over to our application, we can see inside here in our local storage, we now have a seen survey, has interacted with survey, and it has all of this information that we save inside our local storage to tell our application whether we need to display the survey or not. And now if we go back into our surveys and we refresh to be able to view our surveys, and we go inside our net promoter score, we can see our 10 rating right here inside our post hog account. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video on how to create surveys using Angular and PostHog, and I will see you in the next.